Many people may not realize it, but electricity is the planet's largest source of climate pollution. There are things we must do urgently. First, we need to cut back on fossil fuels use. Secondly, we need to use energy more efficiently. And then, we have to increase our use of clean renewables. The dam industry is capitalizing on our concern for climate change by promoting a rapid expansion of dam building on major rivers around the world. But dams are a false solution to climate change for three key reasons. First of all, a changing climate is producing worse droughts, making dams less reliable for electricity production, and bigger floods, making dams unsafe. Big dams are also very inflexible in dealing with such extreme weather. Dams have massive social and environmental impacts. Indeed, big dams make it harder for people and ecosystems downstream to adapt to a changing climate. Dams with large reservoirs reduce water quality and quantity. They also dry up forests and wetlands, food productive land, and destroy fisheries. Finally, large reservoirs give off the potent greenhouse gas methane. Dams in the tropics are especially dirty, and this is just where many new dams have been proposed. Join me on a tour of some of the world's dam building hotspots. We will visit Africa, the Himalayas, and the Amazon to learn why destructive dams are the wrong choice for a warming world. Africa is the world's least electrified place. Africa also has one of the most volatile water systems on the planet. The rivers of Africa routinely experience wild swings in flow. For example, variation in the Zambezi River is 10 times higher than that of most European rivers. This situation only worsens with climate change. The continent has major renewable energy potential, yet too many African nations have already become dangerously dependent on hydropower. Devastating droughts are on the rise, and blackouts and economic disruption have become a recurring problem. Climate models forecast less rain and higher temperatures across much of Africa over the coming decades. An important 2006 report shows that a temperature rise of 3 to 6 degrees Celsius will reduce the water available to southern Africa by as much as half. A University of Cape Town climate study says that it will be like erasing rivers off the map. New dams are being built without any analysis of how climate change will alter river flow, even though adequate flows are critical to the economic viability. Africa cannot afford dried up reservoirs and crippled electricity setters on top of the already high cost of adapting to a changing climate. As in many parts of the world, Millions of Africans rely directly on rivers for their livelihoods. Large dams will make it harder for them to adapt to climate change. In a time of growing water stress, dams will certainly reduce water quality and availability for people living downstream. What is more, dam reservoirs lose large amount of water through evaporation, and more than 7% of all the fresh water consumed by humans is lost through reservoir evaporation. Sub-Saharan Africa already suffers from the worst water stress in the world and climate change is making it worse. Big hydro dams don't address this problem and the benefits that they do bring are as ephemeral as the rain. Climate adaptation for Africa's small farmers requires locally useful projects such as rainwater harvesting, affordable drip irrigation, and other water-saving farming techniques. Such measures reduce poverty at a lower cost. For every billion dollars spent on large dams, 
five million small family families could be lifted out of poverty with these kinds of approaches. A different kind of hydrological risk is hitting the area known as the roof of the world. A warming climate is changing the Himalayas faster than any other region. Its mighty glaciers are the source of many large Asian rivers, yet they are melting very fast. Hundreds of dams are planned on glacier-fed rivers in the Himalayas, and most of them are designed based on historical river flow data. But the pattern of flows is changing due to climate change, and the possible impacts are not being considered. Dams in glacier-fed river basins are likely to be subject to much higher flows at first, and this will cause more frequent floods, which will jeopardize the safety of these dams. Another major safety risk is a sudden bursting of glacial dams. As glaciers in high altitude regions melt, they can form large lakes behind temporary dams of ice and rock. When these natural dams collapse, millions of cubic meters of water are released, resulting in massive flash floods. I'll give you an example. Bhutan has 25 glacial lakes which face a high risk of bursting. Yet Bhutan plans to build scores of hydropower dams on its rivers. None of these dams are being designed to accommodate the sudden disaster of a glacial lake outburst. So many dams are planned for Himalayan rivers that one dam burst could result in a domino effect of dam failure, putting millions of people at risk. In the long term, shrinking glaciers will lead to much lower river flows. When the rivers dry up, these dams will become wasteful relics that continue to damage the environment and downstream communities without providing much power. One billion people in South Asia and many millions more in China depend on Himalayan rivers. Himalayan countries have better, safer ways to develop water resources that help their people adapt to the changing climate and reduce their risk. The current plans for widespread dam building will do the very opposite. The Amazon basin is already seeing impacts from a changing climate. The region recently had two 100-year droughts within five years. As incredible as this sounds, entire tributaries nearly disappeared and hydropower disruptions were common. Yet Brazil is planning dozens of huge dams throughout the Amazon. And these dams would dramatically impact one of the world's most important and most biologically diverse rainforests and indigenous peoples who live there. Sadly, this risky dam boom won't bring clean energy. Amazon dams are likely to be significant sources of greenhouse gases, Brazil has some of the planet's dirtiest dams. Some are even dirtier than comparable fossil fuel plants. Dams can flood large areas of forest, and rivers bring steady streams of organic matter flowing into their reservoirs. This organic matter rots, emitting greenhouse gases like methane at much higher rates than naturally occur. Dams also emit gases at their spillways and turbines. Some researchers have estimated that methane from dams is responsible for around 4% of human-caused climate change. This is roughly equal to the climate footprint of the world's aviation sector. When you add the impact of greenhouse gas emissions to the environmental and social impacts that these dams cause, it is clear that a major expansion of damming is a bad deal for the planet's climate and its people. Climate change poses huge challenges and there are no quick fixes. But it is a devil's bargain to sacrifice the planet's arteries to save its lungs. 
Because of widespread damming, healthy rivers are already becoming endangered species themselves, just when we would need them the most. Each of the regions we've just visited has good alternatives to large dams. For example, Brazil could produce half the energy it consumes today by investing in energy efficiency, solar systems, and wind turbines, and by retrofitting old dams. Africa has some of the world's best solar and geothermal potential. It also has the world's most limited grid system. For millions of Africans who live far away from electric grid, decentralized renewables are a better and faster way to end energy poverty. There are better alternatives to a major damming of Himalayan rivers too. India has some of the world's highest energy losses in its transmission system. A smarter, more efficient grid would save a quarter of the country's electricity. Solar and wind systems are a smarter way to bring electricity to remote mountain communities. From what we've seen, healthy rivers are as critical to our planet as a healthy climate. Smart energy investments that protect our planet's freshwater lifelines are the right choice for our future. We all have to join hands to help make this a reality.